Good morning, it's Ken Walls. Thank you for joining us today uh, on Breakthrough Walls. I have an unbelievably special guest on the show today. I have the one, the only, Mrs. Sharon Lecter, and I am so excited to have her come on. I, I, I just told her a minute ago I couldn't even sleep last night. So, um, so listen, I'm going to go ahead and bring Sharon in and, and introduce her to everyone. Sharon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ken. I'm delighted to be with you. Oh, my gosh. No way are you as delighted as I am. <laughs> But I'm sure you've done. Well, you just made my day, so thank you. Oh, well, I, I'm sure you've done thousands of interviews. So, um, you know, I, I, I started this show. Um, actually, I was talking to our friend Lisa Copeland about it. And, and so I started the show, you know, to, to have, I think people get stuck in life and, and, and they they don't know what to do. So I want to try to help people um, have a breakthrough in life. And, and so that's what this is about, is, is trying, to, trying to give back to the world and, and have, help people break through. So um, what I like to do is kind of start out with, with um, you know, the audience kind of getting to know who you are. Um, if they don't already, then they've been living under a rock. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But you are, um, you're an amazing lady and all that I've read about you and I've watched a lot of your, your content and uh, it just blows me away, like what you've accomplished in life. So um, let's start with like where you were born and raised. Well, I was born in San Diego. My dad was in the Navy, so we didn't live we didn't live there very long after that. I was actually started school in Chicago, the Great Lakes area, wow. at the Navy base. But my dad retired when I was eight, and that's when we went to Florida. So I actually grew up in Orlando, Florida. Oh wow! Um, Disney, Disney. I was the uh, Grand Marshal for the grand opening of Disney World in December of '91. Wow. So um, it, the town I grew up in was very, very different than the town the city of orlando we have today so oh my gosh that's i have a um i have a, a two two young daughters a 12 year old and a seven year old and a few years ago we um we took them for uh, you we made took, the track huh yeah. well it was it was an amazing I, we spent 12 days there it was unbelievable that's amazing. You see that? That's what I mean. Like you've just. Uh, my brother was in in the Navy. I spent. Um, I went up to the Great Lakes um, Academy when he graduated and spent a few days up there with him. So, I'm familiar with that area too. So, like, when so you were growing up. So he retired when you were eight. So I don't know if that classifies you as a, a, a military brat then if, if you're right I still claim it even though I didn't you know my sister went to like eight different schools in the first grade so she's oh. four years old so she has a lot more memories of the than I do but uh, he actually then went on to have a, a total career with Martin Marietta so we were still somewhat uh, military related <laughs> wow wow so, so you grew up in the Orlando area then. Is that where you like went to school and everything then? I graduated from high school and then I actually went to college at Florida State. So yeah, I was in Florida, but when I, at 22, when I graduated from college, I um, started my career in Atlanta and became a CPA. So wow. I haven't lived in Florida since I was 22. Oh, really? How long were you in Atlanta? I was there for a little under four years. Um, I was uh, on a fast track in the CPA firm. My parent, my I was the first generation in my family to go to college, and so the whole my parents wanted us to get college educations and get the corporate job. But in fact, I was raised in a very entrepreneurial home. So instead, in, in addition to having his full time career, my dad had orange groves. We had rental properties. He had a car lot that he owned on the side. My mother had a beauty beauty shop. So I was raised in a very entrepreneurial environment. Wow. And at the ripe old age of 25, um, I said, you know, if I'm going to work this hard, I should be working for myself, not everybody else. And so I had an opportunity to leave public accounting and um, and 
start with a company that I would own a piece piece of the rock. So I, I made that decision. It was the worst business decision of my life. But um, as a result of making that move, I ended up meeting a young attorney named Michael Lecter. And so we're celebrating 38 years of marriage this year. So. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. So so you... you um... Did I hear you say, what, didn't you work with Coopers? Is that like... Coopers and Librand, back then there were the big eight accounting firms, yeah. yes. I was one of the very first women they ever hired, so... Really? It was, yeah. I was the fourth woman they hired in the Southeast U.S., so... Wow. My, a previous CPA I had was a uh, was a senior partner with them or something at one point. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but... Um, so... So you went in, so you ended up getting into a, a you became an entrepreneur and, and, it, and it sounds like that was, that was kind of destined to happen for you. Right. Um, so, and, and what was, what, do you, what was that? What, what was the, the business you got into? Well, it was actually um, one of my clients from Cooper's had invested in a company that was actually in bankruptcy. We were pulling it out of bankruptcy to take advantage of some uh, rollover losses for a new technology. Oh, wow. And I w within a few weeks after ma having made the move to New Hampshire, I realized that there was some irregularities and corruption in the finances. And so I ran away, um, scared to death. I didn't know what I was going to do. I couldn't go back. I couldn't put my tail between my legs and go back to Cooper's. And so... I came back and that was the day and I talk about love at first sight. My husband was in my office. He was doing discovery. They were going through all our files and stuff. And um, we met, I, we often joke today, we tell people we met when he was going through my drawers and it was a, it was a true story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true story. Love at first sight, electricity when we shook hands and, Huh. We were married nine months later. So wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. And you were still in Atlanta, though. No, I was in New Hampshire. Oh, New I Hampshire. had left Atlanta and moved to New Hampshire for this for this opportunity. Okay. So, so up there, didn't know a soul, and that's why you know, it was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Yeah. So, <laughs> I tell people, Napoleon Hill says, out of every adversity comes a seed of an equal or greater benefit. Yes. I got instant feedback. I had the worst business decision yeah. provided me the best life decision. So I had instant feedback. Not always do we get the benefit right away. but Right. And it's so hard, isn't it? Just like when you're going through it and it's like, this is insane. <laughs> what, what am I doing? But the, the end result always is like something incredible, at least in my experience, and it sounds like in yours as well. So as, as you've gone through, because I know, again, the accolades that you've, you've experienced, it's amazing to me. Um, I know you served on the, um, I, I don't even know how to title it, the Presidential Advisory Committee for Financial Literacy, correct? That's perfect. Is yep. that it? Okay. Wow. Under President Bush and Obama, right? That's correct. That's unbelievable. Like that's like, and I, I posted the picture of you in the Oval Office with President Bush. I was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. That's amazing to me. So, um, at some point, you got into um, <clears throat> becoming an author or a co-author. I don't know which came first. Um, how did that all come about? Well, actually, I started when I first, we actually lived in um, in the Maryland, D.C. area for four years, and then we relocated to um, Milwaukee. And while we were there, we met, I started a woman's magazine, Wisconsin Woman Magazine, so that was my first step into the publishing world. And then we met the inventor of the first talking children's book. They have the sound strips down the side. Yeah. I actually, um, we, we grew that business for four years around the globe, and it was exciting to do deals with Disney and Warner Brothers and Sesame Street, and um, we expanded that over a four-year from one to nine million to 23, and then on fourth year on the way to 52, we um, sold that business. But it's um, that was really getting into the nuts and bolts of publishing and doing some writing, and then 
in 91 when we sold that business. My husband and I moved here to Arizona, so we've been here since 91. And um, I continued doing like articles and that kind of thing. And then in 92, when my son went off to college, he came home um, in December and he was in credit card debt. I was pretty mad at him, but I was more mad at myself because I thought I had taught him about money. Yeah. But when off to college, there were the gauntlets of tables welcoming him to the university saying free pizza, free money, free t-shirt, free money. And unbeknownst to us, he'd signed up for quite a few credit cards and um, came home at December asking us to bail him out. Now, we haven't always made the right parental decisions, but that one, we wouldn't bail him out. So it took him seven years to get out of debt and to get his credit back. But that was December of 92. And that's why I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy, financial education. And so I started working with the local school districts on creating curriculum for them. Fast forward a few years, and my husband um, had a new client that came in with this idea for a game. And I met him at the very first beta test of the cash flow game, and that was Robert Kiyosaki. And um, I loved the game. I was the only one at the beta test that got out of the rat race. Wow. And so volunteered to, with my contacts, my experience to help them commercialize the game, which we did. And in that process, um, he told me he wanted to charge $200 for it. And I said, well, you know, you really should write a brochure because that's pretty pricey for a board game. <laughs> and so, um, most people don't realize that Rich Dad Poor Dad was written as a brochure for the board game cash flow. We never intended to become... New York Times bestselling authors as a result of the book. But um, we wrote that book together. And then that was, we became partners in the company and we wrote 15 books together. So, in essence, I co authored 15 books with him. And then the, the my last few, when I left Rich Dad, was when I was, was appointed to the, parent, the President's Advisory Council. And then I got the call from Napoleon Hill Foundation. Now, I read Think Gorich when I was 19. And it's my favorite book of all times. And so to be asked to step in and help reinvigorate the teachings of Napoleon Hill was an incredible honor. And so with them, I've done three books. Think Gorge for Women I got, uh, is my book, and it was my last one um, with them. But I have three or four more other books in process. So My goodness. It, writing became a passion. It was kind of by accident. <laughs> Wow, that that's amazing. So you know Jeffrey Gittimer, I'm sure. Yes, and, I do. And and so I was at his house. I don't know, eight, seven or eight months ago, and he's a friend of mine. And and he has this unbelievable library of all these Napoleon Hill. Like, I mean, the guy know he's like you. He knows Napoleon Hill like the back of his hand. And 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 quite honestly. The um, Think and Grow Rich movie that you were just in, and you you had a lot of spots in it. I was I was really surprised. It was so what an incredible incredible movie, and and I think they did such a great job at you know I because you know I look at like the the chapter on on uh, sexual transmutation or whatever in. Like, to me, I'm like, I never understood what that meant. Like, what does that mean? What's that mean from your perspective? I'm curious. Well, it's actually, if you think about your energy, it's, it's all about the your energy. Are you going to focus that, that energy you have to do something positive? Are you going to channel that? Or are you going to channel it into worry and regret and shame or in, you know, in other not destructive ways? And right. so... Um, the whole concept of sexual transmutation is being able to channel your energy okay. at whatever age you are into focusing on something to create a positive difference. Okay, okay. So, I, you know, and, and they do go into explaining that well in, in the movie as well. But, I mean, it's a great movie. Are, are, you, are you happy with what the outcome with that movie? Oh, oh, absolutely. And I just hope more and more people will see it so that they can... Um, get the information they need to take the next step in their own lives. Uh, it's it's an amazing movie. I've shared it out many times. Matter of fact, I'll share it out again today, but it's a great it's a great movie. So um so along the way, like there's, you know, I, I think that a lot of people see someone like you and they go, Well, it's just been all she's just gotten lucky her whole life. It's all been easy. 
<laughs> so, so um, you know, and I, I've, I've heard people say I'm not even remotely close to your level and I, I, as, as far as success, but, you know, I've had people say that to me. Wow, dude, you're so lucky. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I say that to myself and in positive affirmations, you know, but 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 it's it's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of nights of, of three, four, five hours of sleep because you're really hustling and trying to trying to grind it out or make something work. And, and so what's has has there been anything in your journey that you were like this? This is a a a business challenge that I just don't think I'm going to overcome. This is this is the end. <laughs> have you ever have you ever felt like that in, in business? Well, I've had a long career, so I've had a lot of those opportunities. I call them not mistakes, but learning opportunities. And I think um, sometimes things happen in your life. I, you know, I never, th I thought my uh, split from my partner, Rich Dad, was a huge, you know, um, a very stressful time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was, you know, I thought Rich Dad was my legacy, but somebody upstairs had told me, no, no, there's much more for you to do. And then, um, Ken, five and a half years ago, I lost my youngest son, and that redefines everything. Things that were very stressful and important to me before, they weren't so stressful and important anymore. And so sometimes things stop you in your tracks, and that certainly did. I didn't want to get out of bed for weeks, and in fact, um, it, it really changed my whole outlook on business, it, not so much in a positive way. I'd always been very proactive. I'd always been staying on the top of my game. Luckily, I'd been successful enough that things still came my way, so I've stayed very busy. Yeah. But about a year ago, I started thinking about retiring because I wasn't feeding me. I wasn't energetic about things anymore and um, got a little pushback, and I think I got a little pushback from my son. I could hear him say, you know, get over it, Mom, get back out there. And so I've started a whole new initiative this year that I'm launching, is, and it's the Play Big movement. And for me, it's to play big again. And that uh, each one of us has a talent, and each one of us has experience. And I can tell you that for me, having gone through that experience, yeah. um, it's hard sometimes every day. In fact, this is Mother's Day this week, and then this this his birthday is in a few days. is actually tomorrow. Uh -huh. And so it's a really tough week. And I and it's one of those things where I said, but I'm still here. There's a reason for me to be be here and not him, and I need to uh, honor him by doing what I can do to support other people as well. Wow. And that's what this is all about. It's all about you know being number one in your field, living your legacy, because the, our time on earth is very short. You know, um, and then creating you know creating maximum impact. We each have a gift to share, and there are people out there who can benefit from from each and every one of us. And so I'm dedicated to so, inviting people to join me in the Play Big movement to really share what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, so that they can also do it in their life to create the greatest success that they deserve. And 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 I, I'm I'm in that that Facebook group that you created. Um, and I, it, I get notifications every time you post something, and I always run over there. And I, I think that, um, you know, first off, you know, your heart, I can just feel it. Like, your, your energy is, is amazing. And, and so, you know, I'll do anything I possibly can to, to support you in, in, in all of that, anything. So I don't have the, the following you have, but I have a couple of people that like me. <laughs> you know? that's, uh, that's Gittimer gets on my live stream, and, and when I interviewed him, he goes, hello, Ken, and Ken's two friends. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that sounds like Jeffrey. That's yes. him. Yeah, I'm like, dude, come on. But but you know so I I'll support you in every possible way that I can and and I I know that all of my friends that are, are watching this will do the same so everybody make sure they go and it's what's the name of the Facebook group the the, the private Facebook group is the Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter okay everybody go after this go look it up and I'll I'll post a link to it as well because you you're allowing everybody in the group right. And, yes. and and to be to be even though it's it's remote and it's via Facebook to be mentored by someone like you indirectly like that is invaluable. It could change your life forever. So um, I, I I think that yeah. I mean, if you know, and plus I, when when Lisa was at your your ranch, 
<laughs> my when I met my wife nine it's been nine years ago now um, or eight yeah, no we met nine years ago she had a giant log home <clears throat> on six acres and she's a she's a farm girl country girl she loves riding horses and all that stuff and I was like yes I found my sugar mama <laughs> I've made it and I was like you have, no. to, you have to bring your your is it you have daughters two daughters yeah yeah okay so yeah. you need to bring your wife and your daughters to our ranch at uh, Church- Oh, uh, we, yeah, I've, I, we've, we've been on the website already, so, yeah, we that, would love to do that, actually. So, and, and, and where you live, Arizona, right? It's in, yes. Yeah, so we... It's we, three, it's, our, our ranch is three hours outside Phoenix, so okay. it's, yeah. Yeah, we love, we love, we love that whole area. We were living in Vegas and, and moved back to Ohio recently, but we, we used to go down to Arizona quite a bit, so... The one yeah, great thing about Vegas. It's what, in the middle of the Tonto National Forest. It's totally off the grid. It's all solar power, our own well water. Wow. So it's really a beautiful a beautiful part of the country. It's our little piece of heaven. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So um, so let me ask you this. As, as far as, you know, you've seen probably millions of people. Um, from from stages and everything else. In in your opinion, what would if I don't even know how to word this. What do you think the the number one mistake is that you see people make that that's holding them back? Well, I think is Napoleon Hill when he wrote Think and Grow Rich. When it came, it was his life's work. It took him twenty five years to write it. And he released it in 1937. And when he finally published it, he was frustrated. He says, As even though people know what they're supposed to do, they don't do it. And he sat down in a few short months. He actually wrote a sequel to Think You're Rich called Outwitting the Devil. And it's all about fear and how fear holds us back. And I think the number one issue we have is people are fearful of stepping outside their comfort zone. And that manuscript actually was, his wife was afraid of the title and it got hidden for 73 years. And so I had the honor of bringing that out. And it is a life-changing um, book because it talks about identifying where those fears come from and re- how to get over them and how to continue to open yourself up to create the success that you deserve in your life. And I think it also comes back to getting too comfortable. Um, you know, I, I talk about, Young children, they're very curious and they're creative. They play with blocks. They create forts out of blankets and pillows. Yeah. You know, and then we, we go to school and we get taught some conformity, which part of that is needed. Sure. But then, you know, we, get, we graduate and we get a career and we are somewhat successful. We get comfortable. And then that comfort turns into complacency. And what happens is um, we are no longer zesting for life. We're not our we're not using our imagination, and we end up facing a crisis. And then all things become chaotic. And how do we get out of crisis and chaos? Is by becoming curious and creative again. And so I think a lot of people are stuck because they are afraid of stepping outside their comfort zone. Right. And I, that fear of failure, fear of success keeps people from enjoying the life that they this right there waiting for them. I, 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 you know, I wrote a book and, and I, I actually wrote about when I get into a, a place of feeling stuck or um, stressed out because I can't pay bills or, or whatever the situation might be, you know, I, I'm, the one I'm a graphic designer, so I, I start just creating. I start doing things that are creative because I believe that we're all. Um, I believe you know, relig- man-made religion has kind of messed it up, in my opinion. But that we won't get into that. But I think that you know, in every religion, you know, across the globe, God is seen as the creator, and and every every religion talks about how we are part of that creator. So, like, to get back to that, to get back to your, your highest self, create. <laughs> That's what God did. Created the heavens and the earth and all, you know. So, like, hey, go create something and that'll bring you back to your highest self. That's my opinion. 
Um, it, well, actually, Napoleon Hill talks about that exact thing in Outwitting the Devil, so you may want to read it because it's a, it's an eye opener. And he talks about um, how sometimes organized religion teaches um, teaches about religion through fear instead of through faith. And that's you know when we wrote Think Three Feet from Goal, which was the first book I did in cooperation with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. We came up with a personal success equation is combining your passion and your talent. All right. Passion is your why, what gets you out of bed in the morning, right. um, plus your talent, what you've educated yourself, your experience. And most people stop there because they feel like they have to do everything on their own. Right. But true success comes through that power of association. Like I'm honored and happy to have a new association with you, Ken. And then taking action. And we almost went to press with that as a formula, but we realized when we talked to these people, not just about their success stories, but also how they got through the dark, darkest times and still continued to success, it was they had faith. And it's a plus F in the formula. And they had faith in themselves. But most of us, that F is fear. Right. Fear of criticism, fear of poverty, fear of loss, fear of success, fear of not, you know, it, there's so many different fears that it paralyzes. Fear does one of two things. It paralyzes you or motivates you. And most of us get paralyzed by fear. We get closed down. We get into a dark room. And that only perpetuates the problem. So we want to turn that fear into motivation and excitement to step outside your comfort zone. Well, I, I'm, uh, I, I just picked up two new books I have to read now. <laughs> I didn't. And of course, I've heard of both of them, but I've no, I've not read them. Um, uh, Gittimer gave me a, a copy uh, of um, something. It's uh, Napoleon Hill's greatest something speeches or something. I I don't remember what it was, but it's a, a book of Napoleon Hill's that um, isn't isn't real public, I guess. I I don't know. So, um, but I, I haven't even read that yet. But I need to. I, it sounds like I need. Because the fear thing is real, you know. I'm I'll be 50 years old in in July, and and which blows me away. It happens so fast. <laughs> it's just like, how did that happen? Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm you know, and I'm sitting here and I'm going, you know, like I still face that fear, and it's the fears change. I think right, but. But I still face those fears every single day of my life. I, I write about that in my book, too. I'm like, you know, every day I wake up to the judge, the jury, and the executioners. And they're all saying, stay in bed, you loser. Nobody wants to hear it from you. And, and like, you know, and, and then I have to shut them down and, and change, the, change the conversation up there. But, um, you know, I think that's, that's I, I've talked to thousands of people about that, and, and it's not, uncommon i'm i'm not unique in that sense I no and i think most of us we were you know ever there's so many things that we they talk about the number of times a child hears the word no yeah. as much you know, as thousands of times more than yes and so you know we're almost brought up to have this fear fear you know fear of things around us and it's important for us to think about how we t talk to our children so i you know when it comes to money people say uh, money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford it. Uh, you know, we need to pinch our pennies. All of those things are negative comments. And so you were raised with this thought about money negative, money negative, money negative. No wonder we're fear, fearful that we're never going to have enough money. Right. Or if we become successful, we're afraid we're going to lose it. Yeah. And so once you can identify that, you can start releasing it. But then also challenge yourself to how are you speaking to your own children about it? Are you saying we can't afford it? That's a negative statement. It's definitive. Yeah. Instead of saying we can't afford it, change a few words and say, how can we afford it? That, that, that triggers that imagination. That triggers your entrepreneurial spirit. Wow. All of a sudden, instead of being negative, I can't afford it, to how can I afford it, you immediately change your state of being and your mindset. From I, negative to positive. I love that. I love that. And that's something that we work on. You know, I, I, I know you were on Grant Cardone's show um, recently, and Grant's a friend of mine as well. And, and 
you know, I studied, I've studied his material for several years. And that's one of the things he talks about in his, in his speeches. I, I, you've seen him, I'm sure. And, you know, he's like, how many of you tell your kids, you know, um, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> and he, he goes into that, like, you know, strangers have everything that you want. Why in the world would you teach your kids not to talk to them? <laughs> like, you know, no wonder they're afraid to go out and cold call or do whatever. So, you know, and I, I love that mindset. And, 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 and I we do work hard here in our house to, to teach our children that, you know, they are capable of doing anything. My seven-year-old may be taking it a little too far sometimes. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's fun watching them grow and, and knowing that you can have such a positive impact and, and, and not teach them to... It's very difficult as a parent, and you know this, to, to, to just allow our, our children to make their own mistakes and and watch them do it and go oh god don't do that I want to put them in a bubble but then what happens is when they go to college all of a sudden you're not there to catch them and so i'd rather have a child that's 9 10 11 make a bad mistake and recover from it before it costs them dearly yeah and what happens is we you know we've coddled our kids way too much and then they get out into the adult environment and they they don't have any kind of um, stamina. They don't know how to deal with, with failure. They don't know how to deal with a setback. Right. And um, it, we're not supporting our kids by allow by keeping them in a bubble. I, I, I totally agree. It, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. I'm like, I think about like, how did my parents like, just let me, I, I, I mean, we, the, the, it, it was just run, go do your thing, get out of the house and go play. And, and run with your friends all over the place, and I, I don't know how they did it. Honestly, I don't. Like, and I think back to how some of the stuff I did as a kid, and the fact that I made it. <laughs> like, that I'm, it's amazing, isn't it? Right. Like, what was a car seat? They used to stack us in the win back window of a of a, a little Vega thing that they my you know. I mean, it's like what, what a car seat. <laughs> I don't know how we lived without them, but you know, so. So I guess, you know, if you were to say, because again, I talk, I do a lot of live streaming and I talk a lot about fear, a lot about it, because I think that it's the number one thing that holds people back in my opinion. But if you, if you had, and I've seen you do, um, I, I'd love for you to explain the, the both hands up thing to everyone. Cause I love that. I love that. Well, it's actually um, by uh, Ann Cuddy was a professor is, is a professor at Harvard, and she did a study. And of course, now people are questioning the the the, the validity of her study. But um, I really truly believe in it because she talks about how a phys uh, changing your physical state can help change your mental state. And so we've all seen the Superman position or the Wonder Woman, depending on which one you want to be. Yeah. And so her, her theory is that if you do that for two minutes, all right, if you stand in that position for two minutes, that you will actually change your mental state into a much more positive and self -conf your self-confidence will increase. And then I've added a little something to that in the fact that, you know, if you think about a marathon runner as they're running across the finish line, no matter what country they're in, no matter what language they speak, they all have this giant smile on their face and their hands are in the air yeah. because they've won, right? And so if you think about and what happens when our kids win something or you know, or we all something go we go hands up in the air. So I've added that to the formula. If you need a little extra books, just stand there. And I say, you know, you may not want to do that in the hall, go in the bathroom, <laughs> do it before a big meeting. But by just doing that, you change your physical being and too much of, you know, and I will, I'm too sedentary. Most of us sit too much. We need to get out. We need to get our, 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 our blood flowing and our attitude adjustment. And by just doing that, you increase your self-confidence and it works. It works by just refocusing what, what your mind is thinking on by physical state. I, I love that. And I actually... I, I, the very first time I, I heard you say it, it was on, I think you were speaking somewhere where Lisa was there, Lisa Copeland, and she was videoing on Facebook Live. And, and I heard that and I was like, 
So my wife and little girl were out in the in the family room, and I I walk out of my office, and I'm like, I stand there in that that stance, and they they looked at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I go try it, try it. So you know, it's um, it, it's it's cool. I do it now. I do that, and I do the. The, because, you know, Tony Robbins does that in his seminars. He does that. He's like, you know, he gets people into a, a it gets you into a different state of mind. Before Tony goes on stage, he takes one of those small rebounders with him. And he's backstage on that rebounder before he goes on stage to get his own energy. I mean, he's a giant man, but he does that to get his own energy up so that he can fill the room with his spirit when he walks on stage. Yeah. That's incredible. Have you met Tony? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. So, um, that's on my, my goal list, by the way, it has been for 25 years is to, to meet Tony Robbins face to face and, and hopefully someday be friends. I, I read his first book 30, 25, 30 years ago. I was like, gee, many Christmas. So, um, but, with, and I don't want to hold you up too long. I know you're a very busy lady. Um, but with the, the, um, the, the one thing you would tell people, like, how do you, what would you tell everybody, like, that they could do immediately right now? If somebody watching this is stuck, um, my, my, my younger brother is on here right now. Um, and for years, he's wanted to be a professional golfer, and he's very, very, very talented. Um, but I think sometimes he feels stuck, like he can't get there. He can't get over the hump. Or, you know, anybody in this, this, this streamer that's watching the replay, if they're stuck or they can't get past something, what's the number one thing you would tell them in your experience that they could do to help push them towards that goal? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, what are you, what are you feeding your mind? And what, and I'm going to do two here. What are you feeding your mind and what environment are you in? Because what happens is we do, we get, we get into these patterns yeah. and I call it my own personal rototiller. You get into these patterns where you're, you know, you, and then you start that self doubt. And yeah. so I talked about the definition of the word worry to worry is to pray for what you don't want. And what happens is when you get into that rut, you're always focusing on the bad. Yeah. Start focusing on the positive. And so I catch myself because I'm a champion warrior and I catch myself and I say, stop. Instead of concentrating on the outcome that I'm afraid of, let's concentrate on the outcome I want. And it's magical. Yeah. And so when you're stuck, you need to step outside. You need to go do something different. You need to go to a new networking. You need to experience something creative. Go out into nature. That's one of my gifts of our ranch. I go to the ranch and it's like, okay, I got it, God. I'm this big. <laughs> right. Your beauty. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So focus and start you know, being grateful for what you do have. Yeah. And when you start being grateful for what you do have, doors of opportunity will open. Because what happens is sometimes we get fixed on a single door. Yeah. That's the door we want. That's what we want. And by being so focused on that single door, all these other doors that are wide open to us, we don't even pay attention to them. And, you know, our greatest success might be through one of those. And so sometimes you have to, like, sit back and refocus and say, what is it, you know, what is it that I'm supposed to do? And be and let a little little of that control go and allow the world to give you what you deserve. Wow. Okay, if everybody doesn't go to Sharon's Facebook page right now, um, and 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 name what's the page again? I'm actually going to type it in up here on the screen. The Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter. The Play Big Movement. Big, I'm, I'm putting it up here right now, movement. So, so first off, thank you for coming on. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you came on, took the time out of your incredibly busy schedule. Um, I, I, was, I, I had somebody else that I, I just wanted to get you on because I know how busy you can get. And this, this buddy of mine, he's also friends with Lisa. He was going to come on today and he said, dude, if you can get Sharon Lecter on, 
Like, he goes, now, someday maybe she'll come over and walk my dog. But until then... <laughs> I said, well, uh, whoever it was, I look forward to meeting them. And I, and I want to just highlight, we've referenced Lisa several times. Lisa Copeland is one of my dearest friends. Oh. And she um, is an incredible, incredible gift to support you on your ability to find whatever your heart contents. She's the art of the big cells or the movement that she's launching right now. And she's a gift to all who know her. So please check out Lisa Copeland as well. Absolutely. And, she's, and she's amazing. She's how Ken and I met. So the, the great connector. Uh, she really is. I'm so, and when she, uh, you guys were at a conference or somewhere and, and she's like, um, okay, Sharon's, Sharon's accepting your friend request. And I'm like looking at my phone. I go, I don't see it. She goes, I just did it for her or something like that. I'm like, oh, my God. My life just changed. <laughs> I, yeah, we were in a meeting or something, and I said, here, you just just get rid of somebody. I'm sorry, you know, and then put Ken in there. <laughs> that is so incredible. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for that. And and is there is there anything else that, it, you know, I love, I live my life, and, and I know we don't know each other that well. Um, I, but I truly live my life to, to help other people. Um, and, and I, cause I genuinely, you know, I've got a little personal about me. I have 16 years of sobriety. Um, and, and I, I, I just, I pardon my, my, the expression, but I pissed away so much of my life before that. And so, you know, and, and was a taker in life. And, and so, you know, I've, I've lived the last 16 years of my life really trying to make a positive impact in the world, um, probably to make up for some of the dumb crap I did. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I want to help people. And if there's any way that I can ever help you, um, and, and uh, I, I would do anything to help you. So, and, and I think Sharon, or, or I mean, Lisa would, would back that up. So. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I appreciate, I mean, just doing what you do through these interviews is incredible. And it's a gift to the people that are following you. And um, I really, you know, just as an aside, we have, um, you know, your daughters are the right age. I have a board game that I created, Thrive Time for Teens. Okay. And it's to teach your kids about the choices that they make, not just about money, but how they spend their time. It's got a lot of humor in it. And so people that are watching, um, it's very, it's not that expensive. And it's uh, through my website, SharonLector.com or through Amazon. Okay. And it's that, you know, it was a gift of love for me. I wanted to make sure parents had the tool to be able to teach their kids about money and time so that it didn't make become an uncomfortable conversation for them. Right. So that's why we have a lot of situational things and, and it's a lot of fun. So I did want to share that because... Um, a lot of the people watching here may have young people between the ages of 10 and 20, and it's a perfect um, opportunity for them during the summer months. Yeah, yeah, so, the, where they're not stuck to a, an iPhone. <laughs> like, yeah. we we're, we are finding ourselves limiting that big time because it starts getting out of control and see attitude changes, and it's just not good. So, um, well... Thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for coming on the show. And, and again, everybody on here, make sure they go to the Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter. Um, go to SharonLecter.com. I'm sure all of your books are available on there as well um, and, and everything else. Follow Sharon. Help her in every way possible. And, and um, my, oh, my wife just walked in. She, she wants to know about Meltdown in the Desert. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm speaking at the Meltdown in the Desert later in June. Um, it probably it should be on my events page and my website. Okay. I don't have the date right off the top of my head, but it's an event here. It's a, not, it's a fundraising event, okay. and uh, I'm excited to be there. Good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and I, she had asked that in the stream earlier. <laughs> I forgot to oh. ask. So, um, but anyway, so, all right. <laughs> If you hold one on um, a second, maybe I can figure out when it is. Okay. So hold on. And it's on your website? Yeah. Yeah, the 23rd of June. 23rd, 23rd of June, yeah. 23rd. Here in, um, it's in at the W Hotel uh -huh. um, here in Scottsdale. Okay. 
She just said it is on her site. So, um, great. So, I, I don't know. Is there is there anything special about it that I'm I'm missing that that she's or no? Um, well, listen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. And again, if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. And and all of my friends on here, make sure you go to the Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter on Facebook. Request to join the group, and I'm sure Sharon will gleefully accept your request. And um, yeah. And I also have my business page, author Sharon Lecter, on Facebook, and I do a every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 um, p.m. Eastern, I do an Ask Sharon live Facebook. People can send submit questions, and um, I do a different topic each week. So join join that page as well, and um, we're, we're going to have a, a fun time launching this Play Big movement together. Well, I, I want to help, so whatever I can do to help with that, let's 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 figure that out. So Sharon, thank you, thank you so much for coming on. Everybody, make sure you go follow her. I'm going to post some links throughout the day. Um, to various things to get get some traction as well for you. So um, thank you so much for coming on. Everybody who came on and shared this out, thank you so much. And Sharon, I will, uh, I'm will. i going to let everybody go now. So everybody, Renee Envy said, count me in. I'm in. So th there's all kinds of people that are going to join the movement. So let's make this happen. Thank you guys so much. We will see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.